Hi, welcome to Air Called Anything. Today I'm setting the end float on my CB Performance 78.4mm stroker crank for my Builder's Choice engine kit 2017cc. Um, I'm going to be using a dial indicator to do this, not feeler gauges. And you'll note when I'm doing this, the rods aren't attached to the crank. When I'm building stock engines in the past, I would already have the rods on, I would have sorted all that out and I would be sealing the case up and then doing the end float after it's all bolted together. But on this one, there's lots of tolerances and stuff to sort out in these performance motors. I have to dial in the cam, which is a completely new concept to me. I've never done that before. I've just attached the cam gear to the cam and put it in. On this one, we need the end float set on the crank before we can dial in the cam gear. So the crank's just going in, no rods at the moment. And this is one of the many processes of bolting the engine case together and then taking it apart, bolting it together, taking it apart and just testing tolerances. So first thing to do is just to plop the crank in. Got some oil on this bearing half here, making sure the dowel pins are all in. Grab the crank. And we lower it in gently, gently. This is where your the lines you put on your bearings are going to help. There you go, I felt it drop in there. So this is where it's good to get the other half, you pop it over, and if it's rocking backwards and forwards like that, if you can hear that, it means it's not seated properly. Be this, it's going to be this front one. Yeah. Yeah, it was this front one. Pop it in. There we go. No rocking back on the boards now. Seems to be very little movement. No, it's not moving backwards and forwards at all. Let's try putting the engine case on. So the engine cases are together, just slightly tightened down. I've not like fully torqued them. You just want to get an idea. I've put the flywheel on and I've attached a gland nut, and this is an old gland nut, it's obviously not the one I'm going to be using. I have bought, with the kit, came their racing flywheel nut, which is a 38mm across the flat nut, as opposed to the standard 36mm across the flat nut. And I'm going to have to replace this because when I torque down my flywheel, I use the Torquemeister, or I think there's other names for it, but the MP Torque Tool to get the right foot-pounds on the flywheel. And um, the Torquemeister doesn't work with 38mm across the flat. It only works with 36 I'm pretty sure um, that's the case. I'll get the tool out and double-check before I buy a new one. So that's uh, something else that's not going to plan. Um, I mean, I could get myself a 38 millimeter socket and, and then I'd have to buy a very expensive torque wrench to get up to the required um, foot pounds to put this on them and they are like two over 200 pounds a go. Maybe I should buy one but I've got no other reason to have one apart from rear wheel nuts, um, hub nuts and these things they're the only things that I ever work on that go up to that sort of level of uh, torque but anyway just to measure the end play it can use any old gland nut so i'm going to put that on and you don't need to torque it torque it down um too much um before obviously before i can torque it anywhere i need to lock the flywheel so you need to have one of these like flywheel locking things you've probably all got one there goes the cat the shop cat hey buster caught any mice 
so we don't have to tighten this to the specific foot pounds. Just want to get it snug. tighten up there we go there we go it turns nice and fully obviously the case isn't fully talked fully talked down but you know got no bearing crush there's no tight spots spins beautifully and oh there we go we have the end play so what we do is we're going to measure that end play with the dial indicator um, and then we're going to work out how many shims we need to get it down the, to the required end float, which is between three thousandths and five thousandths. So I'm going to shoot for four thousandths, right slap bang in the middle. Dial indicator set to the flywheel. It's about mm, nearly zero. Pop it in and the dial's moving all the way around. Plus two and a half. So that's 1.02125, 1 1.025 millimetres. So I convert that to thousands of inches and then we'll get our shims out and we'll measure. Dial indicator is measuring 1.025 millimetres of play. That's with no shims at all. So. We need to figure out uh, a selection of shims, which are going to give me clearance of three to five thousandths of an inch. Uh, then we put it all back together and then we measure far more accurately what the inflow is. So this is just like a rough ballpark so we can start playing around with shims. A bit of maths involved here. So the inflow we had with no shims is approximately 1.025 millimeter. I'm not really sure my clock my dial gauge indicator indicator is that accurate on measurements that big. So assuming that is right, we're looking for four thousandths of an inch clearance. And all of these shims are in measured in millimeters. So I'm converting the clearance we need to millimeters, which is 0 0.106 millimeters. I found that with my um, friend, Mr. Google. So we need three shims to add up to the end float without shims minus the required end float we want, which is 1.025 minus 0 0.1016, which equals 0 0.9234 millimetres. So if we're rounding that to two decimal places, 0 0.92. Now, CB kindly provided me with a set of shims. We have 124, we have one mark 32, and three uh, two one mark ones, which when I got my micrometer out and measured it, they came out as 0 0.32, 0 0.34, and a 0.36. So by my calculations, 1.32 plus one of this one, 0 0.36, equals 68 plus a 0 0.24 takes me to 0 0.92 millimetres. So we're going to try these three first. We're going to re-measure, and if we need to make a tweak, we can start playing around with these more accurately. So just to go through it again, 36, 24 and 32, adding up to 92, which is roughly what we're looking at, I think. So they just go on next to the bearing over the crank there at the end where the dowel pins are. Next we put the flywheel back on. Lining up. It's eight dowel pin flywheel. It's always tricky for lining up the holes. There we go. There we go. So we have the clock on, it is roughly just past 20. 
And if we push it in, oh, there you go, 21. Just clicked out to 21. Push it in, clonk. It's going down to four. So that is um, 21 to away four is 17. So that is 0.17 of a millimeter. Putting in those three shims, we now have an M float of 0.17. Now we need to be roughly four thousandths, which is roughly 0.1. So we're 0.07 out. So we need to adjust the shims, double check the maths, measure twice, cut once, and then we should be able to dial it in exactly right. Back at the maths table. So in the last test, we had 0 0.92 millimeters of shims and the end float was 0 0.17 millimeters. We're looking for 0 0.1016, essentially one millimeter, 0 0.1 millimeter. So we need to add 0 0.17 minus 0 0.1016, which is 0 0.0684 millimeters. We need to add that number to the existing stack. So you add those two together and we get 0 0.9884. Round it up to two decimal places and we get 0 0.99. Now all the shims are even numbers on the second digit, so we can't have an odd number in the second digit. So I've got to make these add up to 0 0.98. So if I've got two 0.32s, which is 64, and then I go for 0 0.34, that adds up to 0 0.98. So there are the th three magic shims we're going to try next and see what the end float is there. So I've got the dial indicator set to zero, I'll clonk it. And it's going down about 8.75. So with that combination of shims in, I'm down to 0 0.0875 millimetres. Um, and that roughly translates as closer to four thousandths of an inch, really. So it's right in the middle, basically, of the three thousandths of an inch to five thousandths of an inch tolerances recommended erring a little bit towards the tighter end. Um, so I'm really happy with that. So we can now take the flywheel back off, um, make sure we don't mix up those shims with the other ones, and it goes back on with that same end float. And now I can look at uh, dialing in the cam and looking at com rods um, and the tolerance there, tolerances there on those. Anyway, so thanks for watching, Eric or anything, and I'll catch you soon.